With all the attention on Eli Lilly's quarterly results and Novo Nordisk's announcement to the FDA that Ozempic and Wagovi are no longer in shortage, some major GLP-1 news from Pfizer last week nearly slipped under the radar. On Tuesday, Pfizer held an investor call to report its Q3 earnings and unveil updates on its weight loss drug pipeline. Pfizer announced that it is actively developing three new drug candidates, focusing heavily on oral GLP-1 medications a step that underscores its commitment to expanding treatment options for obesity. Pfizer is positioning itself as a bold contender in the fast-growing obesity treatment market, which Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly currently dominate. By advancing new oral GLP-1 options with pill-based alternatives, Pfizer aims to break into this weight loss duopoly, heightening competition and potentially reducing costs for patients using GLP-1s to treat the disease of obesity. This innovative approach could reshape the field, making these impactful medications more accessible and affordable for millions. Welcome to The Downsized. I'm Christopher Durham, and today we're looking at Pfizer's ambitious plans to enter the weight loss market. Pfizer, as many of you know, is an American multinational pharmaceutical and biotechnology giant headquartered at the Spiral in Manhattan. Established in 1849 by German entrepreneurs Charles Pfizer and Charles F. Earhart, this company has shaped modern medicine for over 170 years. Today, Pfizer ranks 38th on the Fortune 500 and 39th on the Forbes Global 2000, with major products like the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, and Tamifidus contributing significantly to its revenues. For those of you who are new to our channel, my wife Lorraine and I have been on a transformative GLP-1 adventure, losing over 130 pounds with the help of GLP-1 medications. My personal journey has included compounded terzepatide, Manjaro, and Zepbound, and I've personally lost 81 pounds. Today, we're breaking down Pfizer's latest moves to challenge the weight loss market leaders, Nova Nordisk and Eli Lilly, and provide new options for patients like us who are using GLP-1s to treat the disease of obesity. Now I'll start with, we don't own any stock or have any share in any of these companies. Nobody's paying us to say anything. There's no sponsorship deals. This is just the news as we see it. But first, remember, we're not doctors. While we're passionate about sharing our experiences, consulting a healthcare professional before starting any weight loss medication is essential. And if you're finding our content helpful, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss our updates, including our live broadcasts every week. Before we get into Pfizer's latest updates and developments, let's briefly explain what a GLP-1 and a GIP are, since they're key players in many weight loss and diabetes treatments. It's what Lorraine and I have been taking. GLP-1 is short for glucagon-like peptide 1, and that is a hormone produced in the intestines after we eat. It helps regulate appetite by signaling to the brain that you're full, which makes it incredibly useful for weight loss. GLP-1 also plays a role in managing blood sugar by stimulating insulin release and reducing the release of glucagon, a hormone that raises blood sugar. This is why GLP-1 medications like Wagovi, Ozempic, and Manjaro are so effective for both weight loss and blood sugar control. Next up, GIP, or glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, is another hormone that helps regulate blood sugar and also plays a role in fat storage. It's involved in how our body processes energy and stores fat. So researchers think that targeting GIP could improve weight loss results. Some of the newer treatments are looking at both GLP-1 and GIP to see if targeting them together can lead to better outcomes. Pfizer's approach includes options that either mimic a GLP-1, block GIP, or do a bit of both, giving patients a range of potentially effective treatments. This past Tuesday, Pfizer held an investor call to discuss its Q3 2024 earnings and provide updates on its weight loss drug pipeline. They shared that they're working on three drug candidates, primarily focused on oral GLP-1 medications. This is a significant move, as most GLP-1 drugs on the market, such as Wagovi, Zepbound, and Manjaro, are injectable. Pfizer is betting that an oral option 
could appeal to patients who prefer pills and address some of the supply issues that the industry is currently facing. During the call, Pfizer CEO Albert Borea expressed confidence in their lead GLP-1 candidate, Denuglopron, saying, if Denuglopron moves fast based on what we know right now, we should be the second oral into the market. He added that Pfizer expects a decent market share if the drug proves successful. The question you have to ask is what sets Pfizer's approach apart from the other players in the business? Let's take a closer look at Pfizer's three drug candidates. The first, as I mentioned, Denuclepron. This is Pfizer's lead candidate. It's an oral GLP-1 drug designed to mimic the effects of the GLP-1 hormone. In early trials, a twice daily version of Denuclepron helped patients lose 8% to 13% of their body weight. However, Pfizer decided to modify this formulation due to some side effects. They're now advancing an optimized version with more data expected in early 2025, which could mark an important milestone for Pfizer in the weight loss market. Pfizer is also working on a once daily GLP-1 pill currently in phase one trials. This version offers a potentially more convenient option for patients who may not want to take medication twice daily. Mikhail Dolston, Pfizer's chief scientific officer, highlighted that the once daily formulation could improve adherence and patient convenience, particularly for those looking to avoid injections. The third drug candidate in Pfizer's obesity pipeline takes a unique approach by blocking the hormone GIP. While GLP-1 controls appetite and blood sugar, GIP is involved in fat storage and energy balance. Blocking GIP could potentially enhance the effects of GLP-1, leading to greater weight loss. Dulston remarked, that this GIP blocking approach could offer better tolerability and more efficacy, giving Pfizer a competitive edge in the market. This GIP blocking strategy is similar to Amgen's experimental drug Meritide, which combines GLP-1 mimicking with GIP blocking. In early trials, Meritide users achieved an average weight loss of 14.5% over 12 weeks, highlighting the potential effectiveness of targeting both GLP-1 and GIP. Pfizer's approach could offer a compelling alternative for patients seeking something different from the traditional GLP-1 therapies. As we look at this, what are the potential impacts on the treatment of obesity? Well, the introduction of new obesity medications, especially from major players like Pfizer, has the potential to transform how obesity is treated, not just as a condition, but as a recognized and treatable disease, by expanding the range of available therapies, including oral options. The market could see increased competition, which may help drive down prices and make these treatments more affordable and accessible. The increased competition is key here. If the only players in this market are Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly, they do have a duopoly. They can control the pricing. They can control accessibility. If other major players come in, and Pfizer is certainly one of the big boys, there is no choice but to compete on quality of weight loss, on price, on affordability, on accessibility. It's going to happen. With more companies like Pfizer, Amgen, and Viking Therapeutics entering the space, patients could soon have access to various medications tailored to different needs and preferences. The goal here would be to make sure that every person battling the disease of obesity has the opportunity to have a medical treatment if they need it. Some of these are unique enough that they may work for some of those folks out there who have these drugs have not to date worked for or they may work better for. This expanded accessibility is crucial as obesity is a complex multifactorial disease that affects millions of people worldwide. Effective treatment options that are both accessible and affordable could encourage more people to seek help, potentially reducing the stigma around obesity and shifting the focus towards treating it as a medical issue rather than a personal failing. For those of us battling the disease of obesity, this growing competition brings hope for a future where safe, effective, and affordable options are readily available. So you have to stop and take a look at it because obviously the obesity market is giant and ask what is the potential and what does the competition look like? Well, Pfizer's interest into oral GLP-1 treatments comes at a time when demand for these medications is skyrocketing, when patients are living in fear 
of the overwhelming burden of cost. They're living in fear of the overwhelming fear of lost accessibility. The idea that there are more players that could make these easier to get and less expensive gives hope. According to Morgan Stanley, the global GLP-1 market could reach $105 billion by 2030. Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly have capitalized on this surge with their blockbuster drugs Wagovi, Ozempic, Manjaro, and Zepbound becoming some of the most prescribed medications for obesity and diabetes management and becoming some of the most profitable medications in history. These drug manufacturers, these big pharma companies have become some of the most profitable companies in history. The good news, other companies like Roche, Viking Therapeutics, Pfizer, and Amgen are also developing next-gen GLP-1 drugs, making the market increasingly competitive. Pfizer's focus on oral medications could set them apart, especially as more patients seek convenient options that do not require injections. Maria emphasized the growing demand for alternatives, stating that Pfizer sees oral solutions as a significant need. Even Lily C. Uh, Ricks said that they would not actually be able to come off shortage for terzepatide until they had an oral solution. Now, we all know they say they're off, off shortage now, and none of us believe them, but go back and look at the quotes. It's what he said. Pfizer has hinted at their confidence that patients will prefer pills if given a choice. I don't doubt that at all. I'd be happy to take a pill over a shot. Pfizer's financial performance is also worth noting. In Q3, the company reported revenues of $17.7 billion, with their non-COVID products seeing 14% operational growth. This growth is a testament to Pfizer's disciplined execution, as Berea described it, and their focus on key products across various therapeutic areas. Their performance has allowed Pfizer to raise its full-year revenue guidance, underscoring their strategic momentum beyond pandemic-related products like COVID-19 vaccines. However, the weight loss market presents unique challenges. Pfizer's oral GLP-1 candidates may appeal to patients who avoid injections, but they still face stiff competition from well-established brands like Zepbound, Wagovi, and Manjaro. To secure their position, Pfizer must demonstrate that their oral drugs can deliver comparable or better results at a better price. In this dynamic market, timing and efficacy will be critical, as other companies like Viking Therapeutics and Roche are also working to bring oral GLP-1 treatments to market. This is an exciting time in the world of treating obesity as a disease. This is a fast-moving, wild west. Lorraine and I talk about this all the time, and we really see this as the Model T era of, the, of treating the disease of obesity. Things will move fast, and they will only get better. We have hope for tomorrow and belief that some of these medications will come to market. We will have more competitive options. They will be less expensive, and they will be more accessible. That wraps up today's edition of The Downsized. Pfizer's push to disrupt the GLP-1 market with oral weight loss drugs is a significant development, and we'll keep you updated as they progress through clinical trials. For those of us battling the disease of obesity, new choices could be game changers, offering more access to effective treatments. If you found today's update helpful and want to stay informed on everything happening in the world of GLP-1s, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. Your support helps us grow and continue bringing valuable insights to the GLP-1 community. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. I'm Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized. Uh -huh.